Good morning, you're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Rome Paulson. First, I'd like to apologize for starting this show late. But welcome. Today is the 19th of August, 2024. A beautiful Monday morning. How are you doing? How's your weekend? On today's breakfast show, we'll be looking at several hot topics, one of which 1,423 NBAD governance protesters held without bail or legal representation. Much later in the show, we'll be discussing the brain drain in Africa, analyzing the jackpot migration phenomenon. We'll also be taking global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies this morning, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day to set the tone. It does not matter how slowly you go, as long as you do not stop. And that is why Confucius um, is a Chinese philosopher and he says this morning, it does not matter how slowly you go, as long as you do not stop. So whatever you're doing, do not stop, do not give up, keep going. Fine, I know that sometimes you can say it's at snail space, um, snail space rather, um, you're, you're moving slowly, you want it to be fast, you want to get to, um, you, you know, to your destination, you want to end the journey quickly and have that successful life. But at the end of the day, there are so many lessons that you'll be learning along the way. And when you're picking up those lessons, that's the reason why you're going so in the first place, so that by the time you get to your destination, by the time you get to that place of success you've garnered all of this experience and now you're a better person for it you can even handle the success better so this morning we're telling you that it doesn't matter how slow you go as long as you do not stop you will get there look at the um the you know the story between the tortoise and the hare Come on, the, the hair was really, really fast, but it got to burn out quickly. So what you want to ensure that you're not doing is burning out so quickly. As long as you're moving at the right pace, you're getting all the knowledge, all the wisdom, everything that you need for your life's journey. Keep going. Do not stop and you get to that place of success. So it's Monday morning and that is the mindset we want you to have as you go about your week. Make sure that you keep putting all those efforts in place to get to your place of success. All right, moving over to some top trending stories this morning. This first one says, disclose monthly running costs of the National Assembly. Serap tells Akpabiu and Abbas. Well, the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project has urged the Senate President Godswill Abrabu and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas, to disclose the exact amount of running costs allocated to the members of the National Assembly. The organization also requested that the leaders provide an account of the spending details of such running costs. This was revealed in a statement dated 17th of August 2024, signed by Serap's Deputy Director, Kola Wale Oluwadari. In the statement, Serap explained that its request was intended to promptly end the alleged practice by the National Assembly of fixing its salaries and allowances and running costs in conformity with the 1999 Nigerian Constitution and the country's international obligations. Serap advised the National um, Assembly leaders to also put an end to the alleged practice of paying running costs into, into the personal accounts of the lawmakers and added that any alleged misuse or mismanagement of the running costs should be reported to the appropriate anti-corruption agencies for investigation and prosecution. Serap also noted that due accountability and the return of any misused or mismanaged running costs collected by the National Assembly members would build trust in the democratic institutions and strengthen the rule of law, allowing lawmakers to effectively discharge their constitutional and statutory responsibilities, among others. And I think this is a no-brainer. Last week, um, 
we saw the story of one of the um, senators saying that he earns about 21 million naira monthly. And of course, that became a topic of discussion because so many questions were being asked. How much do our senators really um, earn every month? Even though the uh, RMA AFC have said that their um, the allowances plus the basic salary, everything amounts to about 1.06 or 1.09 um, million naira. So how do we go from just over 1 million naira to 21 million naira and when we did our calculation that is a lot of money at the current minimum wage that's about 300 people's salary and then these are the same people that tell us to tighten our belts these are the same people that tell us oh there is no money to even pay you know a substantial minimum wage even though the common man can barely afford a good three square meal or even good housing or good education or good health care but there you have these people who are earning over 21 million naira monthly that is their take home and i'm sure there are also going to be some other allowances so of course this calls for um some form of accountability and transparency how much do you really earn um you know it's better for you to disclose what you earn we know what it, it's like and then you shouldn't even be fixing your salaries yourself so i completely agree with sarah if we're asking if, or rather if you're asking us to trust you if you're asking us to tighten our belts if you're saying oh don't worry nigeria will be better we're going to ensure that everything even our economy will be better then we need you to start to take full responsibility of these things if it means you have to cut down your salaries then you need to cut down your salaries i know that the senators have said they were going to try to um you know slash their salaries into half for about six months but what is that really going to do right we need you to slash it down for a long period of time and what is the what is the allocation supposed to be in the first place i think let's start to work with that what are our senators what are our house of representative members what are they supposed to be earning because 21 million naira is a whole lot of money in four years do you know how much you're going to make in all of that so it is important that you know we have that form of transparency and accountability and that is what Serap is asking for and i don't think it's only Serap. i think every meaningful nigerian definitely wants to know how much they are earning and then let's start to work with that and your running cost if you're saying this is how much we we run you know the national assembly this is how much we run run the senate every month let us know let us see the accounts you cannot, you know, do things vaguely or fixing your own salaries. That is not right. Let's see what you have. Let's try to be accountable and be transparent. And that way we can start to build trust in the Nigerian people. And we can understand where you're taking us. Because at this point, we probably don't even know where you're taking us to. So please, um, I don't know if they would respond to this. I don't know if this is going to happen. And um, it's something that we're just looking forward to seeing. And we hope that maybe they will just respond to us at this point. All right, another top trending story. This is quite a sad one. And it says bandits kill Katsina's governor's aide and wife. He abducts the second wife. Suspected bandits have killed an aide to the Katsina state governor, Alhaji Sanusi Ango Giaza, and his wife. The bandits killed Sanusi and one of his wives had his residence in the Giaza community of Kankia, local government area of the state, on Friday, August 16, 2024. It was gathered that during the attack, the bandits abducted his second wife, leaving the community in shock and mourning. The deceased was a former chairman of the Nigerian Union of Teachers in Kankia local government area. The spokesperson of the state police command, Abubakar Sadiq, confirmed the incident on Sunday. He also, also confirmed that they are on top of the situation. This is what insecurity does, and it's quite unfortunate. Um, this man's life and the life of his wife had just been cut short um, because of insecurity. We expect that our leaders will tackle um, insecurity head on. We, you cannot just be in your home and bandits are coming, killing you, killing your wife, abducting your second wife. So it, now it seems like no matter where you go to, if, if this terrorist wants to come for you, they will come for you. So even if you're in the, in the local villages, even if you're in the urban city, if they want to come for you, they'll come for you. So that's why we need to tackle this head on. Who are these people? What data do we have on them? What intelligence do we have on them? I'm sure they're making calls. I'm sure they're transferring money to several accounts. Let us start to track them as swiftly as possible. 
and ensure that they face the justice system, they are put away. We need to weed out these terrorists from our communities, from our societies. If you know something, say something. I know that, you know, sometimes you feel, even if I know anything, I don't want to go to the Nigerian police because, I, because of the fear that they might rope me in and say, oh, I'm one of the terrorists, I'm one of the bandits. But how can we move forward? Because trust me, it, it's, you might think it's far away from you when it's someone else, but sometimes it really comes close. And that's not what we're praying for. We want a nation that would be safe, where every citizen would be secured. And my heart goes out to, um, to this man and you know the family of his wife, his family as well, and everybody who have been affected by this. It shouldn't get to this point. It shouldn't get to this point, and we hope that the Nigerian government, they're seeing all of these things, and they start to tackle insecurity as swiftly as possible. Finally, our top trending story this morning says Obasanjo, um, well, he claims, he says Nigeria remains backward because of self-centered leaders. Now, the former president of Nigeria, Olusegun Obasanjo, says the socioeconomic and political situations in the country have remained stagnant because of leadership deficit, concluding that the only way out is for self-centered leaders to give way. According to him, for Nigeria to progress from its present dilemma, the present crops of those he labeled self-centered leaders occupying offices at all levels of governance must loosen their hold on the country. He said the country is presently plagued at all levels by a band of self-centered leaders who are deficit of knowledge, bereft of understanding and demonstrating a leadership style that does not see service at the centerpiece for development. He challenged Nigerians to seek by all means possible an end to the culture of enthroning transactional leaders as against transformational leaders who will deliver good governance. The last statement, I think, is quite profound. Transactional leaders, a lot of times, the leaders that we have, they're only going there because they're trying to enrich their own pockets. And in a way, they kind of use that, you know, use that power, the power that they wield to subdue the masses. Now, let me paint a picture. You have a senator, or you have a House of Representative member, or you have a governor, or someone who is in power. He makes all of this money for himself and his family. And when you come to him, instead of empowering you, instead of ensuring that you know there are good jobs when you come out of school, instead of ensuring that there is a you know primary health care center in you know your your vicinity. Instead of doing all of those things that is important, it will rather give you five thousand naira when you come so that next time you will always come and you will always be loyal to him you will always say yes sir you will always say yes boss you will always be at that place um you know of lack so that you always come back for more money and you would never rise to the top and that's not how it should be that's just transaction and a very meager sum and a lot of times we sell our conscience, we sell our votes, we sell everything that we know because of this little money that we get for now, forgetting that there is a future ahead, forgetting that we want Nigeria to be a good nation where all of these things are at our fingertips. So it is important that we are electing leaders that are transformational, leaders that come and they're selfless. They're saying, you know what, I want to make a real change in Nigeria. Not a leader that is coming to give you that 5,000 naira, that 10,000 naira, that one bag of rice, asking you to share little, little sums of money to your community. And guess what? When the campaign is done, it's almost like a performance. It's almost like a dance. When it's all done, he closes the curtain and you don't see him again for the next four years. Is that how we want to change Nigeria? Is that how we want to transform Nigeria? These are many pertinent questions that we need to ask. I know a lot of people might say, oh, it's the right message, but maybe not coming from the right person because even this former president had been accused of allowing corruption to sieve into the National Assembly. That's what one of the senators said last week. And so many people are saying, you know what, you can't even say this because corruption started from you. I know that we can, we, we, we can also say that sometimes, but it is important that we look at the message. What kind of leaders are we having? And we pray that all of the bad leaders are being swept away. We pray that all of the bad leaders are being taken out because we cannot have the weeds growing and forgetting the, the right crops that we need. The right crop that we need right now is people with ideas, 
people who are ready to transform Nigeria, people with great leadership, people with hearts of empathy. Those are the kind of leaders that we want. And hopefully, um, you know, those are the kind of leaders that we are going to have in Nigeria. All right, that's it for our top trending stories. We'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. But first, let's check out the weather. Please stay with us.